Hi, I'm John. And I'm Andre, coming at you from Blue Jay Live. Feeling hungry? Because today our reporter, John Waits, introduces us to a brand new Japanese steakhouse, Tokyo. Recently in Junction City, there have been many businesses opening up. With old franchises coming back to life and local businesses on the rise, we're here to take a look into the new Japanese steakhouse and sushi bar establishment, Tokyo. Tokyo was a locally owned restaurant. Opening up in January of 2018, they've had much success and a good resonance with the community. With an average rating of 4 to 5 stars, everyone's enjoying this new sushi bar. Similar to Umi's of Manhattan, the locals are very happy with having a more local setting with a similar menu and vibe. They have a very simplistic menu consisting of hibachi-style meats and many selections of sushi. And this is John Waits reporting for Blue Jay Live. Now for our weekly trivia question. Can you answer it right? There's a new show at the C.L. Hoover Opera House, and I got the chance to sit and talk with the director about it. Uh, I am the director of the uh, comedy Lend Me a Tenor for Junction City Little Theater. This is actually my 13th play I've directed. I've done 13 plays th and three musicals. Um, so uh, uh, it's, uh, directing is just something I, I love to do. Brent explained to me the joys of directing. You get to learn how to work with all different kinds of people and you have to adjust how to get what you want out of them per each person um, and it, it really it really gives you a better understanding of, of people in general by working with a wide, wide variety and diverse group of people. Brent recommends this show for any lover of the arts. I encourage people to come out and give the arts a shot. Even if this is your first play, come out and enjoy yourself. If this is your hundredth play, come out and enjoy yourself. Uh, it's, it's really a show for, for anyone and everyone, uh, you know, uh, probably not for young kids, but I'd probably say for, you know, around 12 years of age and up uh, would really uh, enjoy the show. The show dates are uh, tomorrow, uh, February 23rd, Saturday, February 24th, both times at 7.30 p.m., and Sunday, February 25th at uh, 2 p.m. If you come out, we thank you very much for, for supporting the arts in our area. For Blue Jay Live, I'm Andre Davis. Stick around just a bit longer to find out if you were right. With the recent rumor of JCHS ridding the block schedule and switching to a seven-day period, we reach out to Ty Dale as he finds out our student and staff's opinions on the matter. How do you feel about the school considering a seven-period schedule next? There you go. Um, my thoughts on that are I think there's benefits and uh, you know pros and cons for both of them. If they do move to a seven like period schedule within a day, it'd be nice to see those students consistently each day, you know. So if someone is absent, let's say on a Monday, that means I get to see them on Tuesday. Um, because I think it's important that we get to see students every day, um, and the the block schedule that we have right now, uh, it's good to have you know like extended amount of time to work on stuff. But I think that students like are in like a routine where they're, they think about class on one day and then they forget about the, the other classes that they should be working on or could be focused on um, because they don't have those. So I think getting to see everybody every day is gonna help um, just make the learning smoother um, and flow more. Uh, I think it would be, I think it would be a, a positive thing for the kids. That's, that's less time in school, I believe. So yeah, I think it would be a positive thing. Probably allow kids to get more work done. Uh, benefit students, see your teacher every day. When you're absent, it's easier to connect back after those days. Um, I'm trying to think. When I was in high school, I had the seven day period, so I just like that a little bit better because you get to see your teachers each day. The contents, you know, let's say if I go over a content or something new on a Monday and then I don't touch it till Wednesday, it's hard to forget that. But if you're continuously, same routine, having those schedules for the whole week, then staying fresh and being able to learn the content better. Okay. 
Okay, I have personal experience with both types of schedules. I personally attended a seven period schedule when I was in high school. And then I also taught in that district for one year in journalism. Um, and then I've taught here in Junction City High School for seven years plus student teaching in the block schedule. So I'm familiar with both. Um, my personal preference is a block schedule. Um, I just believe that one, because students can take eight classes instead of seven, they have more opportunity for elective courses and be able, have that ability to fit in more of those CTE courses to better prepare them for college. Block period, I feel like, I, I definitely don't like the fact that our classes are like 80 minutes long and then we still have homeroom kind of. It's kind of ridiculous because, I mean, you should be able to get all of your stuff done in that 80 minutes so there would be no reason for homeroom. But I also feel like that's one of the reasons I like block schedules because you can get all of your work done in that 80 minutes and during homeroom so you don't have really much homework after school because people do have like jobs and life's outside of school. <laughs> um, also, the block schedule <clears throat> provides more playing time for teachers. So we have more time to grade and lesson plan for our students. And then the seven period schedule does have the benefit of seeing your students every single day. But because the classes are so much shorter, um, 50 minutes rather than 80 minutes, a lot of times students struggle to get all of the information down that they're wanting. So in a block schedule, it benefits, for example, an English class more so because they can do the reading and write and answer questions all within one class period without having to forget what they have read and then come back the next day to get a refresher. If they can do it all at one time, it benefits them more. Some cons. Um, let's see. I think some of the cons for a seven-hour schedule um, is that, you know, and I think that's going to be like a 45 or like 50-minute class period. Uh, I'm not sure what the timing is going to break down to. But some of the cons for a uh, seven-hour schedule um, is going to be that in, in some classes, like a science lab, uh, or you know the the classes that I teach production classes like trying to put the the yearbook together We need some additional extra time to be able to sit down get materials out and do the work um, So those quick class periods uh, might not give enough time for for some of the the lab type classes that that do projects I feel like it would it would overwhelm us just because seven periods it would be shorter time so you wouldn't be able to get much work done and then you would have more to do outside of school and grades would probably fail. With Kansas's weather being completely unpredictable, we throw it over to Marcus for this week's forecast. Hi, I'm Marcus, here with the weekly forecast. This Saturday, we will have a high of 41 and a low of 22. This Sunday, we'll have a high of 48 and a low of 24. This Monday, we'll have a high of 57 and a low of 37. Tuesday, we'll have a high of 63 and a low of 36. Wednesday, with a high of 48 and a low of 29. Make sure to dress up warm for those cold days and maybe dress nice for those warm days. That'll be all for the weather. Hope you have a wonderful day. Thank you, Marcus, for the update. Blue Jay Live is partnering up with some of the faculty at JCHS to bring the Pride Awards to the CAC. Every other week, Academy Ambassadors will get together to vote on students for these awards. The winners of these awards will be showcased in a segment on each of our bi-weekly shows, competing in a single contest against each other with a chance to compete at the end of the year, becoming JCHS's Pride Champion. With winter sports season coming to an end and spring sports beginning shortly, we go to Aiden Alexander for his athletic update. Hello, my name is Aiden Alexander here with your sports update. Spring sports are on their way here to change the atmosphere at JCHS with the start of baseball, softball, boys golf, girls soccer, girls swim, boys tennis, and track. That's a doozy. We have an interesting end of the school year coming our way. Shout out to the wrestling team and their seven state qualifiers. Terrence Adelai, at 182 pounds, Kenson Henderson at 220 pounds, Russell Wilkie at 152 pounds, Max Bazan at 132 pounds, Matthew Witten at 126 pounds, Logan Rother at 
138 pounds and Siddiqui Smith at 178 pounds. They will be competing for their state title February 23rd through the 24th at Hartman Arena in Park City, Kansas. Both basketball teams will be playing their final regular season games at Washburn Rural today, February 23rd. Both the boys and the girls will then compete in the state tournament starting next Wednesday, the 28th of February, in pursuit of getting a state title. Well, that's your JCHS sports update. This has been Aiden Alexander reporting for Blue Jay Live. Keep on trucking. Brandon is giving us a look into his upcoming project, Flare, with the teaser trailer. It's been a crazy few weeks with some great news. Signing out for Blue Jay Live, I'm John. And I'm Andre. See ya, Blue Jays.